Hey, sixth grade. When you guys are ready to start working on your masks, two things to make sure you've got on your mold. You need a piece of plastic wrap on top, and then on top of that plastic wrap, you need a piece of paper towel. That's going to ensure that as these things dry, they don't stick to that plastic mold and they pop off easy. So what you're going to put on top of all that is your slab of clay, which is this flat guy right here. So to begin with, just kind of drape it across. And one of the common problems that kids make is they will actually start to smooth everything from the nose down and the nose gets too thin and eventually there's a hole. So instead of pushing down like this, let's just gently press that clay around the outside edge of the mold. Because we use something called a slab roller to roll these pieces of thin clay out, there's a texture on there that comes from the canvas. If you don't like that, you can use your thumb and smooth it all out. The extra clay that you're going to end up using for things like noses, mouths, whatever else you need is going to come from the stuff around the clay down here that you can use a paper clip and trim off. So while you're not using clay like this, it's a good idea to put it in your bag so it doesn't dry out. Also double check to make sure that if you have pieces like this on the top that these get cut off and trimmed as well. Now when you cut all this stuff off, you want to be sure that you're not leaving any super sharp edges. Um, like we talked about in class before, if you leave any rough edges, it can actually come out of the kiln sharp enough that it might cut you. So once you're satisfied with how you've got your mask pressed onto your mold, that's when you can cut, kind of start to come in and find the details again. And what I mean by find the details is the eyes, the nose, the mouth. If you need to flip it over, flip it over. And you can see back there where all the features are. So if I'm looking for the lips, I can hold my finger back there and I can kind of try my best to touch those two things together and find them again. Sometimes I get kids asking how they can make things identical on both sides. So if I wanted to add some of like a eyebrows or even a brow line on top of my mask. All I need to do is cut one piece out and then I can use some of my extra clay and what I just did there was put it on top and trace the outside edge. So that's gonna give me two pieces of roughly the same size. <laughs> As you can see, I've already added that one piece of my brow bone on this side and I'm getting ready to put this piece on the other side. Again, just a reminder, this is scoring. You need to score both sides no matter what you're doing with clay. If you're going to join one piece to another piece, that scoring has to happen. That's what's going to ensure that this sticks together. And not only do you need to score, but once you push it together and give it some gentle pushes, then you need to smooth in this thing down at the bottom. The line where both pieces meet is called a seam or a joint. Use your finger or a tool and smooth those in and get rid of them. We don't want to see any of that. One thing I often get a lot of uh, in terms of questions is how to make a nose. So to make a nose, start with a rough sphere of clay and what you're going to do is take fingers and start to push. And when you're pushing, what you're trying to start to make is a rough pyramid shape out of your clay. From there, keep on forming it. You want one side to stay flat. This is the piece that's eventually going to be stuck onto the face. But once you're happy with the shape, score the back, stick it on, and smooth out that seam. Once you put your pieces together, sometimes you're a little bit surprised at how different sized they are. Um, in this case, this nose is quite a bit bigger than I think perhaps I'd want it to be. So don't be afraid to take your clay, and even once it's been put together, you can still push it and pull it and smooth it around and change the shape of it. Just because you've already put it together and joined it and scored it doesn't mean that it can't be changed once it's still on there. You can also trim pieces off. All right, you still got kind of a bigger shaped nose, but I think for right now, that'll work just fine. So what we need on our project is Two add-ons, which if you've been paying attention, these would each be counted as one, the brow bones on top, the nose would be counted as a third, so I'm already at three. We also need to have some incisions, and incisions can be things like physically cutting out some clay to leave a hole in which you'd be able to see the brown paper towel, or 
in the case of what I'm doing right now with the nostril, cutting out enough clay that instead of going all the way through my clay project, I've removed just enough so that it creates some negative space in there. Now again, make sure you're smoothing everything out even when you cut it. Sometimes your fingers aren't going to be small enough and that's when you can use things like the tools or even the rounded edge of the paper clip to kind of come back in and smooth those rough pieces out. Once you're more or less happy with the shape of your mask, if you need to come back in and actually begin to add designs, use your paper clip for that. And let's say I want to make an incision for an eye, but I want to make sure I get the shape done correctly before I actually cut it out. You can use that paper clip to draw into your clay. Now if you don't go deep, that's okay because then you can erase it with your finger, so to speak, if you make a mistake. Um, but once you get the shape or design that you're happy with, then you can come back in and either completely cut it out and incise it or use a tool to scrape some clay away. When your mask is to a point of being done, have your partner help you if you need to. And what you're going to do is pick it up, put your hand over the top gently, turn it upside down, and your mold should pop right out. Leave your paper towel in for now, and then when you put it on the tray, make sure you set it upright. If you need to, you can also gently reshape it if it kind of got a little wonky while you were taking it off the mask. At this point, double check to make sure your name is on the bottom somewhere. Otherwise, you can also pull up some of the paper towel and write it on the inside if your mask isn't too fragile.